Okay, so welcome to Legit Crypto Lounge, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, we're an organic crypto group. We're basically trying to connect real projects with uh, real people. Um, today, we're joined by Coyote and a few of their team members. Um, so I'm going to hand over now to these guys and let them introduce themselves. Hey, man. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having us. We're, it's, a, it's a real honor to be here. And... Um, we're um, we're glad that we were able to get this scheduled with you guys. So we're we're excited about this, and we're excited to share this uh, opportunity with you guys as well. My name is my name is Mark. I'm uh, part of the team. There's several of us in here today, so I just want to go through and introduce everybody real quick, if you don't mind. Uh, so we have in here in this chat uh, Chris Hunter as well. Chris is our founder. Um, Chris is here. We have uh, John, Matt, Joey, and X all in this chat as well. Everyone brings different um, levels of experience and expertise. Everybody has their own um, craft, and, and we all we're, – we're a small part of the team. We, we have a to total of 12 people, so um, all combined, uh, 12, and, and we all have different uh, uh, avenues that we serve in, and we come together uh, to make a dynamic uh, team all together. So um, anyway um, – what I'd, what I'd like to do, Tobster, is take some time to go through our uh, website and our white pages with everyone. And yeah, no I'm problem. And I'm um, going to bring in some different people of, of the team to, to talk at different points uh, throughout that. Because uh, these guys are the real, <laughs> they're the, they're the um, heavy hitters here. Sure, no problem. So you want to just sh share your screen if you've got it up ready? Or, or would you like me to bring it up? Yeah, let me let me try to do that. If you have it up, go for it, man. That would be great. Uh, I did have it up. Where's it gone? Kaidico.in. The website is coyoteco.in. Uh, yeah, I should have it up. I don't know why. I've got too many duck, duck tabs up. <laughs> the ducks. It's all about the uh, ducks. Here, I'll pull it up in the background. Let too. me just... Ah, uh, there we go. All right. Can you guys see that? Yeah, so this is the... Yes. Uh, this is the white paper, and um, what I wanted to do was um, go through this a little bit. We want to give a couple different guys on the team an opportunity to talk. Um, you know, this is an extensive white paper. I think it totals 26 pages or so. Um, yes. It's a nice white pretty, paper as well. I actually like it. It's really... The artwork is incredible. Uh, our guy, JR, John on the call here. Uh, did the majority of that or all of it probably the guy's really really artistic and uh, huge part of what we're doing here and we're happy to have him uh, you'll get to learn a little bit more about nft collection that we have as well and uh, that's all you know his handiwork as well there um, so real real quick the the coin itself um, i wanted to give chris hunter an opportunity here he's our founder Want to give him an opportunity to talk a little bit about the origin story. Um, so, Chris, if you want to jump in. Sure thing. Uh, thanks for having us, everybody. Um, one, oh, I'm, I'm just, I, I would say I'm a founder because it was something that Bella and I worked on together. We started uh, making preparations and working on it. I guess it was around March of last year. So, you know, it was one of those things. I, I came from a more traditional investing background. <laughs> and when, uh, back in the day, that's what I did for a while, and I was pretty good at it. And um, then I ended up working in insurance, so it's kind of a weird, like insurance is all about avoiding risk, and crypto is a very risky, you know, a very volatile area of their space. And so it's kind of weird to 
function in both of those worlds. But anyway, that's the way that's the way it was. We started um, starting investing in projects. Started out on you know things that were listed on Binance and Crack and stuff like that, and, and you know those are good. <clears throat> but then uh, realized pretty quickly that while those were good, the biggest opportunity lied in things that hadn't yet been listed on major exchanges. So then the, the whole education process began of how you buy these things, right? And I guess anybody that's ever participated in one has seen that it's not the easiest thing for a lot of people. Like mm -hmm. I'm pretty tech savvy, but it, it's still like screwing around with it, you know, antique swap, conversion of smart chain, um, all of those things, uh, Uniswap versus uh, pancake swap and um, using wallets and things. It's a little bit different than what most people are accustomed to. But we got familiar with it, and we started, in, uh, you know, investing in these new projects. And I don't know. I found out about one from a. I was just. It was a, like a 13 year old kid on TikTok did a video about something, uh, a project that was coming out, and I was like, you know, that sounds pretty good. And we got into it, and it was like, it was a massive success, like two and a half million percent return um, at the peak. You know, from the start to the peak, <clears throat> we didn't participate in the entire return, but we did real good on it really well and um but it, the, the problem was that we ran into um with with that project was a uh, the liquidity uh, there was there was um the, the, there was supposed to be a burn and it wasn't really it was still accessible oh, i don't know if that was it was probably a mistake i don't think there was any there was no malicious intent um and i liked that project a lot but there was that and um also the team they seem like, I don't know, a lot of the people that are putting these things together, no offense to people that are younger, but they're pretty young. And I didn't feel comfortable um, with the level of professionalism, you know, that they that they displayed. Uh, and I didn't feel comfortable with the, what I perceived as a lack of experience in business. And um, when I was watching them sort of struggle their way through it, but their marketing was fantastic. The community was super. So anyway, uh, we identified certain problems with those uh one of the big problems was whale disruption right the the even something like that that had that much success they had the uh, they had huge huge well wallets and when it got to the b you know up in the when it after it had some some of its initial success i mean i was watching these wallets and they had you know one of them had 200 million dollars worth one of them had 150 million Several had, you know, 50 million, tens of millions, 100 million. And I would watch the transactions happening live, or we would watch, Bella and I would watch these transactions happening live. And it was like, you know, it would go up. It would be like all, it would green, 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 you know, $5, $10,000, $6,000, dollars people of all different, you know, financial means buying in what they could. <clears throat> and it would do like that, you know, occasional sell here or there, little ones. It would do that for six hours, 12 hours straight, all just climb, climb, climb. Then all of a sudden, one of these early investors or, you know, whale wallets, they would dump $13 million in one transaction and erase the entire previous 12-hour game, right? Yep. And then it would do it again. It would do it again, get slammed again, all in one whack. And it happened like that every single day for like 10 days to two weeks. And then it seemed to be like a recurring theme all the time. And then what, what I started to realize was, these these whales start worrying about when the other one's going to sell and trying to beat each other to the punch. Like if I'm, you know, one of the one of the whales is look thinking about these other ones and thinking, well, I need to dump before one of these other guys do, does because I'm trying to get. They were they were all trying to get money out of the thing because I mean, like they're sitting on you know two hundred million dollars. They, they want to convert them out to cash. Um, but it it kind of cripples the project, and it seems like that happens over and over, and then people get tired of waiting. Uh, and sort of trickle off, and, it, and they kill the whales kill projects. I mean, yes, they help them in the beginning when you know because they uh they pump it up when they're buying in. Um, but man, they, they cause a lot of disruption sometimes they're manipulating on purpose. So, anyway, long story short, um, I approached the team about you know with that project, I talked to them a little bit, <clears throat> expressed different concerns, and the answers were basically there's nothing they can do about it. I mean, once it's a thing, it's done, and it's out of their hands. And so at that point, you know, I thought about it a little bit. We, we decided we didn't want to be a part of it anymore because it was, it, to me, it was like a slow rug. It was like a slow, you know, like a vehicle. They could actually, that was my, one of my biggest problems. They could, they had, there was reflections there as well. And the wallets were so huge 
that these guys could, they could literally just sell their redistributions every day, never touch the nest egg and just sell the redistributions every day. <clears throat> right. And so um, it was like, never, they would never actually go below their original position and they, they could like pocket $50,000 a day off of their redistributions alone. And to me, that was just like a financial parasite, just a vehicle for transferring money from the community to their own pocket. And I couldn't live with it. You know, like we had a lot, but we didn't have that much. And so we sold every, you know, we, with those things being not fixable, we sold out of that. And um, then Bella said one day, you know, if, um, if you can't find, you know, we continued to look and find anything else that we didn't see too many issues with. So she said, you know, if you can't, if you can't find what you want, then why don't you create it? And I was like, you know, that's, that's pretty smart. Okay. So then we started working on it. We got linked up um, with um, a, a very professional white paper writer, you know, somebody that's, I, I, I kind of classify people in different groups. There's like crypto snobs. They don't mess with stuff like, uh, like moon coins and shit coins. Like it, it's like bad language to them. You know, they don't yeah. like it. And then you've got people that love that stuff, you know, like, it, it, and it's two different crowds. So what we wanted to do was appeal to every crowd. Right? What, when we were building this in a design, a design phase <clears throat> and working with him, um, he was from California, from California, super professional, very intelligent, also very expensive, um, but well worth it, I think. And anybody that reads the white paper, I think they would they would see that it was the guy did a great he did a fantastic job um, with, you know, with our input also. But um, the, the the whole idea was is that we designed during the design phase, we build it so that it appeals to everybody. I want we wanted it to be appealing to people that like shit coins, moon coins, crypto snobs, you know, and he actually turned us down. The white paper guy, when I first approached him, I was like, Hey, I saw your, I saw your fees. I think they're high, but, um, you know, we would like to work with you on the project. And he was like, no, uh, you know, I'm not really interested, blah, blah, blah. Um, here's somebody else you might reach out to. And I was like, wait a minute. Uh, huh. you know, I, I called, I, what were you going to say? Uh, sorry, no, that's all right. Yeah, no, go on, carry on. Oh, okay. So, so, uh, I, I went back to him and I was like, okay, wait, I was like, listen, would you at least listen to me? Like talk to me for five minutes before you, before you tell me no. And then if you don't like what I had to say, you can, you know, then tell me to go screw myself. And he laughed a little bit and he was like, okay. <laughs> so then I told, I got, we got on a call with him and we communicated what we were trying to create. And, uh, I, he was at a point where he's like a, um, a partner, you know, in a cryptocurrency consultation firm out there in California. And they're very successful. So he was at a place in his, in his life, in his work, in his work life where he didn't really have to do it. You know, he was doing things he wanted to do. It was more about him doing the things he was passionate about and what he likes working on is token economics and white paper writing. <clears throat> but he's, he gets approached by so many people that are just trying to create a rug or, you know, just a, the garbage, you know, garbage product. They're just trying to get rich quick kind of thing. So he, he was in a, he was in, in um, a pattern of basically turning people, turning people away. But once we told him what we were working on, he got to know us a little bit, he became interested and he wanted to do it. So then we moved for him. Um, but that, what we're going to do is create the, create the thing during the design phase to appeal to tr traditional investors too, because there's a lot of money, a lot of people that are comfortable with traditional investing that are not comfortable with cryptocurrency. Um, some of my friends, you know, some of our friends anyway, uh, uh, there's some, uh, Charles Schwab, some at Capital Group, um, some that are money managers for, you know, they just, one of them just has like one super wealthy family client. And that's all they, they only handle their, them. Those guys, they're not, we're not just trying to appeal to them, but we wanted it to be something that felt comfortable to them. Also, uh, somebody that would appeal to crypto snobs, like, the, you know, our friend, I say that in a non, I don't mean that in a, in a negative way. It's just how I say it. Uh, but something that would appeal to people are, you know, more into mainstream established cryptocurrency, um, as well as things that appeal to people that like, moon, you know, moon coins and sort of the, um, you know, the things that those other guys wouldn't like so much, um, because we want to draw people from every crowd, basically. Um, I don't want to go on and on forever. You guys probably have a time rotation. So if you want me to stop or cover something else, let somebody else talk for a bit. I could do, I could be quiet. So, so that, that was how it, the project was born then, I guess. Yeah. So if your experience from uh, something else has kind of led you to where you are today. Right. Try to fix all the issues that we saw um, with those. And, you know, we, we can dive into a little bit what we did to solve those issues um, that I can you know, if you want to get get with somebody else in here and let them talk a little bit, I just don't want to 
I'll talk forever if you let me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what do you, do you guys want to do? Do you want to run through these challenges that you faced and how you how you've put them into your token and um, or your coin? How, how you've let's, so well, let's talk about your past experience, I guess first. With um, I mean, you want to run through this white paper, don't you? Is that your plan? Yeah, that's something we'd like to do. Maybe not in its entirety. It is lengthy, but. Um, yeah, I no want problem. To hit on the high points, like the tokenomics, for sure. And I'd yep. like for I'd like for Joey to to jump in, and, or uh, X rather, excuse me, to jump in and talk a little bit about that. Um, so X, if you want to you want to jump in and let's discuss the tokenomics a little bit. Please, yeah, sir. absolutely. So you can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, you're good. Yeah, so uh, you know, talking about other other projects and other things that we've seen, some of the um, biggest gripes in in a crypto community is, man, you guys have a large supply, you know, you guys need to implement, you know, some sort of utility to, to burn, some some way to add, you know, to reduce your guys' supply, you know, because us as holders, you know, we'd like to be able to see that. So um, taking that piece into it and then our anti-whaling piece as well that, that Chris was talking about. So with our token or with our coin, uh, the way it's designed is, Everyone that holds uh, part of our coin gets uh, a, a reflection or a reward, right? And that's 5.5% of uh, all transactions. It's live. Um, and the longer you hold and the more that you hold, um, it scales off of off of that piece. Um, so when someone goes to sale, uh, sell their coin, right, we have just a standard flat uh, rate that gets applied. So it's 11%. 5.5% um, gets redistributed to holders. 3% uh, goes back to uh, a burn. And it's not a burn wallet that any of us control. It goes straight to the dead wallet and it's uh, in the transaction so everyone can see it's it's live there. So, you know, taking that, that worry or concern out of someone's head of, oh, these guys are just, you know, holding on to it and then they're going to burn. No, no, no. We wanted to make sure that it was clear cut. Everyone can see it. it'll be in the BSC scan. Like you can actually see it in the transaction. Um, so that piece will be there. And then 2.5% um, gets uh, re put into uh, liquidity as well. So even when, um, you know, you have, you know, a, a large amount of buys or a large amount of sells, um, that tokenomic is still applied. So holders are still getting rewarded for, for holding. Um, burns are still being implemented um, as well as uh, being added to liquidity as well. So now our piece is our harpoon tax, right? Our, our anti whaling feature. So if, if a whale tries to sell off, um, you know, a very large portion of, uh, of their wallet, uh, that, uh, redistribution fee changes to 24.5% um, on top of the 5.5 for redistribution that all holders get a benefit from. Um, and so can you tell them what the total, the total transaction, like the total, like the harpoon tax accounts for a certain amount, but the total that they're penalized and it, it and the, yeah, yeah sorry, absolutely. And so the, it, the, triggers the event right now. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so it'll be a thirty-five percent tax fee that gets applied to that uh, particular transaction that a whale is trying to implement. Yeah, so and that, again, that's a, that the, the the highest amount you'd you'd pay is thirty-five percent tax, right? Yep, that Currently, is correct. Yes. It's yeah. modifiable using a smart contract, uh, multi-signature smart contract. So, if we find that that's not um, if that's not enough to deter whale disruption. Now, the normal people don't have to worry about this, right? Like mm -hmm. people buying and selling, they're not going to get hit with it because it, it, you have to, in order to trigger that, uh, X, it's like, um, what, 5% of the last 24 hour volume, right? Uh, so it's, it's, yeah. So it's, a, it's about 10% of the last day's worth of volume. Okay. So, so let's say you had a, a, a million dollars in volume the day before, and if this guy is trying to sell uh, over a hundred k of that volume, then he's going to get hit with this whale tax. Is that, am I understanding that right? Oh yeah, that's correct. That's cool. I like it. It's a nice feature. 
uh, if they behave, then good, right? Because we don't want them not to participate. We want them to be mm -hmm. in. But it's kind of like the way I described it's kind of like, you know, for whales, uh, like Chinese finger cuffs, you know, like they can, it's easy in, not so easy out. And it, it, the main purpose is to prevent them from disrupting, you know, like um, just causing panic selling because a lot of times when they do that, other people see it and it scares them and then they start to sell and then the whale will buy back in at a lower price. It's harder to do when you have transaction fees, but we want, but it still happens because we watch it, you know, we've seen it happen. So. Yeah, but it's definitely a deterrent, yeah. I think. Yeah, absolutely. So the other piece of that too is, um, you know, with this, we wanted uh, individuals to see this as a long-term project, not, not as a day trade, if, if that makes sense. So again, that's where the reflection piece comes in. The longer you hold, um, the, the amount of reflections that you receive uh, increases, if that makes sense, right? So. Okay, right. So, so the longer you hold, the, the higher this 5.5 percent is going to go is, is that well so uh, it's based it's based on the amount that's in your wallet that's Can where just... yeah go ahead joey yeah so um hey everyone i'm i go by rico but my name is joey um so when we started talking about this with chris something that he said that really chimed in with me is, is compounding interest um and that's a huge piece to this, that as you're earning those redistributions, it's automatically putting the coyote into your wallet from those redistributions, right? And as your wallet grows, you're going to receive more of that 5.5% because it's distributed among all of our wallets that are holding coyote. So mm -hmm. whenever, there's, whenever there's a buy or sell, it's proportionate. So if you continue to hold more, you're going to get more redistributions. So your redistributions are making you more redistributions. Um, I understand. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's, it's just constantly reinvesting your redistributions all the, at, at any time. You don't have to do it manually. So that yeah, was something effect that stuck out to me. So, so yeah, effectively then, so that, that 5.5% redistribution is basically growing your own bag. And if you're not going to sell that, that redistribution, then you're going to get a bigger share of that, uh, of the, of the, the 5.5 percent sales coming through exactly yeah. yeah that's correct um and i also wanted to clarify because me and x have been have been kind of chipping away and getting ready for pre-launch so we've been running through a lot of numbers but it is five percent of the last 20 the previous 24 hour volume not 10 percent um so if it was a million it'd be it'd be more than fifty thousand. so Okay, right. So, so yeah, okay. There's just a question that's come up in the community here at this point as well. It's quite relevant at the minute. Um, how do you keep volume up so normal investors are not hit by the harpoon tax? So for example, if we're down at 10,000 daily volume, a 2.5 BNB sell is going to be hit with the harpoon tax, right? I think you, you touched on the fact that it's variable in your smart contract, so you can change this. But do you want to elaborate on that a bit? Is that, would that be your plan if you know normal investors were going to get hit by it? I don't know if you guys want to take that, but I, that, so, that would be uh, so if I could, right. So <clears throat> the volume is based on the amount of coyote that's, that's traversing, right? So let's say, you know, you, we had $10,000 in a day and you have, you know, $10,000 worth in, in your wallet, right? Um, unless you're selling that whole 10,000, then that's the only time that you'd be hit. But if like, for example, if I only had, Four hundred dollars, right? I wouldn't be get hit with. I wouldn't get hit with that tax. So it's the moment that you go past that volume. That's when you. That's when you'll get it. So normal investors won't get hit with it. It's the moment that you start going uh, above that that volume. If that okay. We're gonna have problems like that. I mean, we're. I think we're approaching two x of the pre sale. Like, um, you know what I mean? Like, I think there's there's already a pretty high level of interest. Um, so I think we're not going to have a problem with that, but it's a good question. And, you know, you never know, like nobody knows what's going to happen. They don't have a crystal ball. So good question. Yes. Real quick, if you don't mind, guys, it's Mark. Um, one, of the, one of the exciting things, and I want either X or uh, Rico to talk on this a little bit, um, that I think is going to help out a lot, um, is the fact that, and this differentiates us from all the other projects out there just in the BSC space, is that we're, we're dual chain. Um, so I'd, I'd like for one of these guys to jump in and talk a little bit about that as well. 
Yeah, I'll take this one. Um, so I know when it was originally designed, we had, we had talked and said, well, what what's going to be the future and what's kind of future proofing moving forward. Um, and BSC coins are great, you know, significantly less gas fees um, until ETH gets their stuff online. Um, but we wanted to be able to open that up because there is just some, some huge ETH holders out there um, and not necessarily keep it cornered into the BSC part. So with building a dual chain coin, it's going to allow us to be able to be listed on Uniswap and on PancakeSwap as well um, while sharing a liquidity pool in wrapped BNB. So it'll allow us to, through the smart contract, just be able to swap whatever we want into our coin. Um, and it opens up the avenue of, of different markets. You're not kind of cornered into the BSC market where people are just stuck there. It, it opens us up to a lot more than that. So what's, so what's your what's your aim behind that then? Um, is, are you hoping the arbitrage is going to help you with the daily volume? Can you repeat that one more time for me? So are you are you hoping that the daily volume, you know, the, the arbitrage between the different chains, are you hoping that they're going to help with your daily volume as, you know, one price fluctuates or are, are you running both in the same, on the same chain? Um. So if you imagine like, just being a BSC coin, then we're kind of trapped over here with, okay, well, what, what can be traded on, on the BNB side? Um, and opening it up to a whole nother side allows us to have access to people who may have never wanted to get into a BNB coin or a BSC coin. Or, um, and so it just, it, it opens up that avenue of, yeah, there's, there's a whole nother level of Ethereum while it's on the other side that now have access directly into our coin. Um, so there's uh, only a pop there, in our opinion, of being able to be dual chain, dual chain for future proofing. So are you planning to use the same liquidity pool, like split the liquidity pool, or are they gonna be running on different things? No, so it's 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 a total liquidity pool with wrap BNB. Um, our smart contract automatically transfers whatever you trade into that liquidity pool. Right. Okay. So if you're if you're if you're transacting like for example on pancakes while using uh uh Binance Smart Chain, right? Any of mm -hmm. those tokens in there will interact with the with a smart contract and then put the liquidity in uh the BSC side. Now if you're doing Ethereum side, like on the Uniswap, right, it'll interact with the wrapped B and B and then it'll be an ERC twenty equivalent. Does that make sense? So it's so it's the, two the separate it's two separate liquidity pools, but yeah. it's they, or, you know, whichever one you interact with, that's the one that it'll interact with that liquidity pool. Yeah. So, so you, you're gonna yeah. So you're gonna have two different prices, aren't you? You're gonna have a, a Coyote ETH version and a Coyote BSC version. It'll still be a wrapped BNB, so the price will still be the same. Um, okay. So all right. Yeah. So it's gonna be the same on you know, on the different uh, network sides, if that makes sense. Um, it'll just be, you know, whatever coin you interact with, it'll take that amount versus what wrapped BNB is worth, and then it'll just transfer it over. So the theory so is one, one could cool. prop the other up. Yeah, if, if one one's stronger at the minute. I mean, there's, it's good to have different LPs because if one one's struggling at Absolutely. the minute. Yeah. That's interesting. Plus, I think our, our timing, launch timing is, to me, it's like coming around what looks to me like a very good time because if we if we launch sort of at the beginning of a recovery, general recovery, then our price will be um, favorably impacted due to the ties to those liquidity pools also, like outside of people buying ours. Yeah. Uh, no. it's, speak, speaking of lunch... Um, uh, it's kind of a running joke in our Telegram community. Everyone asks, win, win, win lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so speak, speaking of that, uh, let's let's talk a little bit about that because we just actually um, made a big announcement yesterday, and I think uh, either Matt or John could probably hop in and talk a little bit about that. Matt, go for it if you want to chat through that. Chat through that. Oh, you're going to make me do it, huh? <laughs> um, all right, so... Uh, yeah, I'm Matt, also known as Batman. I do all the things. 
Um, so I've been running support for our community, um, being a, a somebody fighting for the end user and for all of our people, uh, kind of been the voice of them in, in all of our team discussions. And we wanted to make sure that we, when we had a pre-sale date, that we were doing right by everybody, at, at least the best we could. Um, there's never a perfect time. That's like the, the, the saying goes, there's never a perfect time to have a baby. Same thing goes for launching a crypto project. Uh, <laughs> But we uh, we did a lot of internal testing. We did a lot of uh, testing with an external third party, and we're working on an audit right now. Uh, we felt that the market um, was in a in a pretty good place, and we're still within our timeline that we originally wanted to to do it within was Q1 of this year. Um, so we announced yesterday that our our presale date is this Saturday, the 12th. It'll be at 3 p.m. Eastern. And we know that time is correct. It's not actually 4 p.m. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so we've got 3 p.m. Eastern for that, and uh, we've got our we've been we've been filling up our whitelist for the past month or so uh, in an effort to block out any bots or scams or anybody trying to game the system. Um, we initially started out wanting to have kind of a two phase approach with our, our whitelist. And I'm going to go into that a little bit just because it kind of, it has to do with our launch, our pre-sale date. Um, so our goal was our market cap is $980,000. And our goal was to have, uh, our phase one whitelist of around 750,000. Uh, so that way if somebody wanted to do a little bit more, a little bit less, it wouldn't matter. It's kind of, it was an average. Uh, so we locked that in. And then anybody that didn't make phase one uh, got rolled into like the phase two whitelist, uh, which will be opening up either late Saturday night or early Sunday morning. Uh, and at that point, it'll be a first come, first serve, and they should be able to fill up whatever is still outstanding. Um, we've been completely blown away with support. Um, we hit our commitment of $980,000 within a couple weeks. And... Right now, we are overcommitted. We're sitting around, on average, we're at $1.1 million of committed, uh, and that's the median, so between the low and high. And on the high end, we're committed at 100 and, not, not 100, sorry, $1.6 million right now on the high end. So obviously, whoever doesn't get in on pre-sale will roll over into our public sale. So we're, we're expecting to have um, a really big launch right out of the gate because getting in on on day one of a pre-sale or getting on on day one of a public sale is is the next best thing to getting in on a pre-sale. Yeah, cool. Right. Let me just while we're on this subject, let me just run a few things past you here. Where, where are you sure. doing your pre-sale? Where are you having that? It's going to be on DX sale. Um, on DX and that was sale. something that was chosen by the original um, the original guy that helped kind of come up with the the whitelist or not the whitelist, the white paper and all of that. Yeah, cool. And um, just a question regarding regarding this uh, uh, commitment of, of, of funds that have been committed to you. Have you thought about the ifs and what's, like, what if, if we don't get near that amount? Um, you know, because it was, it was a while ago that the, 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 the pledges were made in some cases, wasn't it? So, you know, so well, you know, chances, Yeah. Yeah, so we've, we, and that's why we kind of went with the range from the get go on that is we gave people a low high range so that one, they didn't have to feel like they had to like open up their, all their finances to us, but two, it made them a little bit more comfortable that they could kind of, kind of go in the range and, and we planned for the middle. Um, now, the earliest was probably within the past 30 days. And as we get closer and closer to launch, and the more that we have been, uh, really building this community up. Uh, we're over a thousand members strong across all of our various platforms right now. Uh, our email list alone is is nearing a thousand email addresses. Um, and if anything, we've seen the complete opposite. We've had people double their initial pledge again and again and again. I had somebody, I've had multiple people, one guy yesterday who came back and did a 10X on his initial pledge uh -huh. uh, after the news of our pre-sale being Saturday. Um, I've had people that started off in like the $1,000 range go all the way up to like $15,000 range. So it's been uh, overwhelming support from the community. And I have not had a single person yet say that they wanted to lessen their pledge. Now, one thing I will say too, um, so, 
so if I, if I could, so our presale, we uh, made it really limited too. So we didn't want, you know, people going into presale to where, you know, cause there's been presales before on other projects where people have gone into presale like, Oh, cool. I'm getting in. But then people were leaving with almost like 30% of the total supply. Right. So for our presale, we're limiting, we have a cap of 20 K is the absolute max investment. Um, for what they can buy from the presale. So I just wanted just to, to throw that out there. So you guys were aware too. Yes. Yeah, so, so how, how are you going to structure this? Are you, are you setting a, a soft cap and a hard cap or are you just allowing all the white lists in whoever's white list to, to commit what they want? Yeah. So that's, we have a, um, there's no cap. Well, there's a hard cap at the 20,000 and that's built into the contract itself. So, even if they come in and say, I want to, I want to buy a hundred dollars and I put them on the whitelist for a hundred dollar range and they come and spend 20 grand, you know, that's fine. You're not going to get slapped or anything. Um, but the, the hard cap is on the $20,000 to prevent the whales this early in the project. And, you know, so then we've had a lot of people asking like, Oh, I said, I'd be good for like one grand to five grand. Like, is it okay if I spend more than that? I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Like we're not going to limit you. We only ask those ranges for, to help us kind of strategically figure out how many people to put on phase one versus phase two. Okay. So, so the, the plan is to, to list all the white lists in phase one and see what point you get to. And then whether it opens up to phase two or not will be dependent on how much you raise in phase one. Is that right? That's right. correct. Yeah. It's possible that we hit our market cap within phase one and phase two doesn't get a chance. Uh, it's possible that people on phase one might not even get a chance if they wait long enough it could it could fill up fast um but either way phase one and phase two are both whitelisted addresses only they're ones that i've personally verified and vetted um there's not a single bot on our list and if it is and they're really good with their ai um so we've got a lot of that stuff nailed down so no matter what it's not going to be like you know the contract goes out on reddit and a and a, and a subreddit catches wind and then it fills up with people that aren't even in our community um, that's not going to happen. Like they, it's all people that I have their addresses and their emails and all that stuff. And also to, I think to answer the question, to answer the question, it, the original question, which is what, what happens if we don't, first of all, I don't, that doesn't even occur to me. Um, you know, like in my mind, it's going to be, is going to be maxed out and a lot of people are going to have to buy a launch day, which is still not about, it's still not bad. I mean, damn, buying a launch day is awesome. I've never bought anything on day one. Um, to me, it's a huge opportunity anyway, but there is a technical answer to that. Um, and I'll also, before I before I pitch that one back, I would, you know, because I think um, X or Joey could answer to that better. What would happen? Tech, like, you know, it's built in. What will happen if it's not met? Um, but I would also say that if somebody has significant fear, or if they don't, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy if they don't if they don't like what they see or they're worried. That when I when I move the project, everybody that I've had. Everybody that I've had interaction with who's looked at it, read the white paper, spent any time with the team, has been, they've all been interested. I haven't, I don't think I've had anybody say, I don't, I don't think that's going to do very well. You know, so to me, that's almost, it's unthinkable that that would happen. And, um, you know, but, but no one knows for sure what, what the future holds. And I, I, I wouldn't say, to, you know, if somebody, I would only put, I would only put my money in something I felt really comfortable with. And if somebody was, if they were really concerned about something like that, then I would say, the wire, you know, but no, uh, yeah. you guys speak a little bit about the technical side of what would actually happen if that was Yeah, so, I mean, uh, so it, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, it was just, it was more to understand what you would do. Let's say, like, I'm not, I'm not saying that there's any fear about anything at this point, but uh, what, what you, you see it quite often in this space where people kind of wait to see what everyone else is doing, like, oh, is it filling? Oh. Is, are people, you know, so they're, they're watching. But let, let's take an extreme example, and let's say you guys only raise um, 500K of the, uh, the potential 1 million. Um, right. Would you push ahead with launch? That's what, that's the technical side that I was going to have them speak to. Um, if, if you guys are good with that. Yeah. So with, uh, with DXL, right. So we set, uh, soft and hard caps. Um, so the way it's set up is let's say we didn't meet our soft cap that we're looking for. Um, all the funds that are put in to DXL will go, will go back. Um, us as a team would probably get back together, um, 
kind of look at how we can uh, either do some more marketing because all the stuff that we've done now is all or or all organic growth. We haven't paid for for ads. We haven't done um, any of that piece. So all of our growth that we've accomplished is all organic um, through word of mouth, uh, through examples of white paper discussions. Um, you know, so. And just even hosting on like our AMAs that we do uh, live either on our Telegram or our Twitch channel through our socials. Like that's that's just how we how we've naturally grown. I, I've um, got to say as well, just interrupt you. It's the best way to do it as well at the minute. You don't want to be yeah. going to all these all these calls and stuff like that and getting people. Like I'm already seeing from your community and the way they joined our Telegram after you shared it, uh, how strong a community you've got. And I was, I was discussing that with Mark. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good way to go about things. Yeah, yeah I just want to echo that. I'm kind of keeping quiet and letting these guys talk because they're the geniuses here, quite honestly. But um, I did want to just echo that real quick. We have an awesome community, man. We, we have great folks over there in our Telegram and all our socials. They've been really supportive. So, yeah, I'm glad that you realized that as well. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, I think it shows. Yeah, and I think that's one of the biggest things that we that we definitely push is not you know ju not just as a team, but I mean that's how we cohesively interact, right? That's that's the mentality of the den, right? Uh, that's our community is our family kind of thing, right? So, you know that's that's how we started even just this team, right? It's it was all organic, just naturally developed, um, you know that we hold our, the community in these in the same aspect. So it's, I, I definitely agree. This is this is one of the most supportive uh, communities that I've seen out of other projects um, as well. So, and yeah, what I was saying earlier about the, um, you know, when I said if somebody didn't feel comfortable, just to make sure nobody misunderstood that, that wasn't like a, that didn't come from a place of like, you know, being butthurt or, or anything like that or, or defensive. That was like, I meant that in a friendly way. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah like, no problem. Okay, yeah. just making sure nobody took that as like me being defensive or anything. I, I meant it. In a, I meant it as a, in a friendly nature. And I understood. You learn from me. I'm one of the most laid back guys. Uh, you know, nothing. Nothing <laughs> makes me trigger. But right, listen. Uh, we're aware time's getting on. There's still so much to talk about. Um, like, c can we just rewind a little bit to your tokenomics? Um, because we've we've gone from that to something else um regarding your lp what are you doing about locking it how long are you planning to lock it for and you know two and a half percent is a decent number so your lp is going to be well fed um do you have kind of plans to to reevaluate that if the lp starts getting too strong and you know so your chart can still go up a little bit um like what, what's your plan with locking it yeah, absolutely. So um, in our in our DXL presale, right, we're going to lock the liquidity for three years. Um, and then at that time, uh, I think us as a team and the community can can decide, hey, so our thing is unlocked. You know, is there additional things outside of, you know, what we're going to be releasing uh, later this year for our ecosystem? Um, you know, what other things is, is the community looking for too? So I mean, that's, that's where it is at right now. Now, again, in, in three years, you know, it could be, you know, the community wants something else or, you know, they, they request it just to be relocked. So I think at, at that time, that's, that's when, uh, you know, could, us as a team would come together and, and make that, make that vote with the community. Could I make a suggestion to you and, and is to yeah, keep absolutely. it unlocked when you first launch? Um, because it's, it's obvious that you're a real team. You're, like, you're all you're all fully doxxed. I've seen some of your Twitch streams. Um, like, there's nothing to hide there. And the worry is sometimes things go wrong when you launch. I know you guys have said you've 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 tested it in things. Um, I'm not sure what kind of testing you've done, but like the problem of draining a liquidity pool after is can be quite hard. So it's it's a thing that's been kind of put it put fear has been spread into people now and, and you see these people locking LPs for a long period of time and sometimes they shoot themselves in the foot. Uh, I was part of a project a, a while ago that did the same thing. Um, you know, you think it's the good thing to do, but like potentially look at um, perhaps not locking it for so long from the get-go and then if you want to lock for three years after that, do that. The other thing to bear in mind with that is is pancake swap V3 when that comes out. V two screwed us over, so yeah, right, that's something to think about. 
Yeah. So, so the other piece, yeah, so the so the other piece uh, of that aspect too is, um, and I know we're going to touch on this subject next. So, part of our NFT collection that we have, um, so to kind of be able to um, help out with some some of that uh, liquidity piece, right? So, like if we, for example, Pancake Swap migrates to V three, um, one hundred percent of our NFTs goes to liquidity after sale. So that kind of also helps um, with that as well. The, the issue is though, is if it's locked, like I don't know how, you, I don't know if you saw the transition from V1 to V2, they didn't do anything to support V1 projects. They left you left the hang in there. Yeah. Um, and you couldn't, you couldn't migrate your, from V1 to V2. So basically when everyone went to buy on V1, they were urged to buy on V2 because V1 was no longer supported and it, it, it created FUD in itself. Yeah, right. That's interesting. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for bringing that up too. Yeah. No, it's just something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, uh, where else have we got? There's so much to talk about. We haven't even really spoke about your utilities properly yet. Um, do you want to tell, touch on them? Do you want to tell us what you, what the full utilities <laughs> and things that you're planning to do? Yeah, we can um, we can talk about that some. Um, that was one of the things that I wanted to go over. Let's see. <clears throat> so so like some a lot of the guys you'll hear them talk and they'll say we're building an ecosystem. So there's a lot of different a lot of different facets to the thing that's being built. But um, main the main focus in my mind has always been um, a long term utility that generates revenue because. You know, you see all these things launch. If you look at it, if you look at a chart, a price chart for cryptocurrency, almost all of them look the same, like a new one, right? They they it, it, they all they come out low. They have like a parabolic spike, uh, followed by uh, a a big a, a big company coming back down to earth, and then they kind of just trickle off to nothing. And to me, that's like the hype train. The hype train only ca carries you so far. Yeah, everybody wants, you know, oh, it's going to moon, let's buy it, and I'll make a quick buck, and then I'm out. And then they're on looking for the next thing. And then that cryptocurrency ends up in, in the graveyard uh, of cryptocurrencies, you know, where they, it just kind of people, over time, they they trickle off and the, the price chart goes down. In order to in order to not fall into that, um, you have to have a, a real utility. You know, cryptocurrency has, it, to me, it's like a, it's like a corporation. If, it, you know, nobody's going to buy Tesla stock if Tesla's not making cars and there's not some clear path to the future of revenue generation. So I'm not saying the hype train is bad. I'm just saying the utility is, to me, far more important than um, than the hype train or a price increase because of, because of hype. Um, so the, the focus... The focus for me has been since the beginning that it be technical in nature. Um, and it kind of goes back to, <clears throat> there was two main, of course, there are more issues than this, but to, in, in Bella and I, in our eyes, the, the two biggest um, two biggest threats in, uh, in the projects that we had participated in or in, crypto, in the crypto industry generally was whale disruption causing downside downside volatility and panic selling um that and the other thing is um barriers barriers of entry to new people new people to people new to crypto right like you can get in okay you can open it you can open up a binance account you can open, open up one with crypto.com or kraken or coinbase or whatever and you can buy things but um the the thing is with that is, is that by the time they are listed on Binance, you missed it. I mean, yeah, you might still get something good, right? You might you might two x or three x, you know, two or three hundred, four hundred percent return over time. But you know, we're talking about some of these projects. They, you know, they'll have a one million, one million, two million, two and a half million percent percent return while they're on Pancake Swap. You know, like that's how they end up on Binance, and that's how they end up on Kraken because they're they're you know, they have great success, but um, a lot of these people, the vast majority of the people in the world, they don't know how to do all this. Like you can give them instructions. Okay, well, open up a, you know, open a wallet and then you need to buy BNB and then you need to convert it to smart name and then you need to import the token and blah, blah, blah. And people can't, like you, any, any new project, I, I imagine everybody here has seen how many questions and posts and how many people struggle who haven't done it before. 
and they're afraid when they do it that it's going to go to the wrong place or their money is going to disappear because they do something wrong or whatever. Um, so <clears throat> to use an analogy, uh, I don't want to go into like super detailed description of what we're doing and how we're doing it, but I can give some broad strokes. And the best analogy I can give is this. Think about think about the music industry when people could pirate, when piracy was happening and people were downloading songs, right? Um, music labels weren't getting the, the income they were supposed to get. Artists weren't getting the role they were supposed to get. People were downloading songs on, on their computer. Um, some people might not be old enough to even remember this happening, but uh, it was a thing. And, and the people that were downloading the music were breaking the law and they knew it, uh, but they knew probably nothing would happen. And, but they also were getting viruses. You know, people would download a song, computer would get wrecked by a virus. Uh, so everything was kind of internal. And um, Steve Jobs was at Apple and they ran him off and then they started to fail around the same time. And then they asked him back. And he came, so he came back and they were working on 125 different projects. He said, you know what, scrap all that, scrap all that shit. We're going to focus on, you know, three things. And it was iTunes, iPod and iPad, right? And those became trans, they were transformational. You know, they, they revolutionized the music industry because it, they, because of two things, they made it cheap and they made it easy. You could download any song you want for 99 cents. It's on your device. You're playing it. You don't have to worry about viruses. You don't have to. You know, you know, you don't have to feel bad because you're breaking the law, doing something illegal, and it completely. You know, now we're on to streaming and other things, but it, it they were that's one of the that's like what made Apple such the huge success that they have been ever since, and they've been basically riding off of that since it happened. That's the kind of that's the kind of view I have on utility for us is basically do something. Kind, it's the analogy is is do something like that, but for the crypto industry, uh, that's where our utility is aimed to eliminate confusion over chains, you know, uh, Binance chain versus ETH, um, pancake swap versus Uniswap, smart chain conversions, and new token importation. Um, basically a utility that allows all people, regardless of experience or technical knowledge, to enter the crypto space and have access to new tokens that are launching, not just the stuff on Binance and Kraken and crypto.com and such. Um, but uh, especially new ones, but but really any cryptocurrency. But it, I wouldn't. It's not an exchange. It's not a wallet. It's just a, a way to make it so that all these people that are afraid to come on, come come over to the space, um, or it's too difficult for them. It's all simplified so that anybody could do it. Like anybody doesn't matter. Seventy five year old person. A lot of people that are in that age range. That's where a lot of money resides in the world. Most of the people that have money aren't twenty or 19 or 18 in tech savvy, they're older, they're traditional investing, you know, they're comfortable with traditional investing um, and they can't do it even sometimes even with help. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the direction with that. It's technical in nature. The point would be <clears throat> to, to simplify it using, you know, the, and it's, it, it utilizes um, forms of artificial intelligence Um and then basically what, what we would do is we, we would generate revenue with that. You know, it's sort of the same way that um, BNB is used to pay the fees uh, when people make uh, trades on uh, Binance Exchange. Um, we would do the same thing and it would, that, would be the creation, that would be the revenue creation that would drive the long-term piece, uh, utility-driven revenue basically for that. So it's kind of, it would be kind of like a service. Um, a technical, though a technical in nature. So I don't know. To me, and I hope I'm explaining it the way now that I, that we've talked about it before on the um, amongst ourselves and the team as we've been working on it, because everybody kind of feels the same way that it it it's not like just another, you know, like oh we need something so let's pick something out of the air. Like for me, if it's not going to be uh, revolutionary, you know, and something that could it could affect the entire industry, I don't. I'm not interested. I don't want I don't want to just pull a utility out of a hat because oh god people are asking for that we need one I want something that just blows the doors off of the whole thing you know like that's the most important part in my opinion so does that did I explain that in a way that makes any kind of sense Yeah yeah sort of so I I've, I've kind of got that you you want to make this inclusive and easy to access for people and you know you you want to keep it open to beginners to get not into just not just coyote all all new projects you know what I mean? If okay. you can get a hold of the contract address and say how much you want to buy in a U.S. dollar amount, it's done. Yeah. 
So, so how, what, how can you can you expand on that slightly? How do you plan to do that with the, the utility of Coyote? Yeah, I guess I I guess is that can I talk about that a little bit? You guys, you think it's okay? My our only concern actually was somebody else would try to beat us to yeah um, I, implementation. No, no, no. Yeah, I understand. This it's kind of a common thing in this space, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, kind of give us what you can. Um, I guess I, I'm 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 I kind of got that impression the kind of the way you were talking about that question uh, yeah we, <laughs> there's, there's it, something yeah, there gonna, but you, i'm gonna you, pull you the kinda... reins on them i'm gonna pull the yeah. reins on just a little bit but hey toby can can we get a promise to come back and maybe make an announcement here whenever we get ready to release more information on that yeah of course you can yeah yeah <laughs> I, I was just I, I was just trying to dig a little bit into kind of you know your usp but I, I'm, I'm guessing you just want to keep it under wrap for a little bit for now. It's a two-edged yeah, but, but so it's just to, just kind of put a just kind of put a cap on that real quick. Um, one of one of the main objectives that that we've had a tagline even on our site is to change the way people think about crypto, and we've gone a long ways in educating uh, new people and um, catering to uh, people who are already educated in the spaces alike. And um, that's done a couple of different ways. If you if you go to our website, you actually dig in. I mean, we have a we have a Zen desk that uh, people are receiving responses to in a really timely fashion. And there's a lot of information, a lot of thought. Um, Matt's been a big part of that. Batman on here, but a lot of thought and a lot of um, you know, process to work through to to make that very simple for people to to do and, and compounding that all into one one spot. So we're going to take that a step further. You know, not just educating, but actually doing. That sounds yeah. good. Sounds interesting. Um, listen, I know, I know time's getting on, and you got, I think you guys have got another AMA on your your um, uh, what do you call it? Twitch, haven't you? Is that today? Hey, can I give? Can we give John? It is. It's uh, just to talk about our NFTs real quick. Yes, yeah, sure. There's the something I want to out. touch on that I saw as well that I really like yeah. here. And um, you don't see it very often, but it was the, the performance unlock of the team tokens. Um, this. Yeah, that, that's sort of part of the design. You know, going back to what I was saying, we tried to design it to all the different various crowds and to, tr to attract people from places like these you know, big financial institutions, they have a tendency to tell people, no, 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 don't mess with crypto because they don't, they don't really understand it. So we wanted to, we wanted to, well, a lot of them don't, you know, um, so we wanted to appeal to them too. And one of the ways that you appeal to people that think like that is you build something that's sort of resembles what they're used to seeing, right? Like how does Elon Musk get paid? Uh, it's based on his performance. Why is he the richest guy in the world? Because his, his stock unlocks, um, his, his stock, his, his uh, stock unlocks are based on price performance of uh, Tesla stock, right? So he's incentivized to make it to make it perform well and, and practice his principle. And so that's one of the reasons why we did that was because that's something that a I think it, it seems fair. Uh, B it's something that makes sense to traditional investors. Yeah, it's just a really nice concept, I think, because it keeps your team motivated on working on the token as well and, uh, you know, getting to them different performance unlocks. That's really nice, a nice thing. Yeah, it, aligns, included. it aligns us with the community. Um, if we don't hit those uh, objectives, whatever's there, goes to the community instead. So, so let me just uh, expand on, on that one, one second. So you've got 20% of the tokens for the team, correct? And then, uh, are you guys going to be buying in personally as well, or are, are you all twelve of you on this using this twenty percent? So uh, no, I will. No one be. wallet's going to have more than two percent. Uh, so no one wallet will have more than two percent. We have twelve people on the team, so kind of do the math there. And um, not even, and even in that, not all of that's going to <laughs> us as the team to hold individually some of it's being set aside for future expenses and if we have to bring in any other participants later okay are, are, are these team tokens included in reflections yes okay and um one more thing and then we can go on to the nfts and i think i've about covered everything that we've kind of 
I know it's been a bit skippy. We've gone backwards and forwards a little bit, but uh, you got a fifty percent burn, right? Yes, that is correct. So, do do you want to just expand on that a little bit? When you're doing it, why you're doing it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the burn is is automatic. The moment that um, uh, the coin uh, was created, uh, the burn automatically took place. Uh, it wasn't, you know, held into a wallet to be burned later. It, it's an automatic uh, burn that happened. Um, and so the the reason for that, again, like like you've seen on other projects, it's, um, you know, the, it was. A community crypto ask of well you guys have a large supply like you guys need need a burn and so kind of taking that that learning process from other communities and then improving upon the areas where other projects had failed that's mm-hmm. where our coin really shines right we took what was bad from other projects and we implemented changes in ours to ensure that um it aligned with what the community wanted and it had a good vision for for the future, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, no, no. Like having a large supply. I mean, like that's kind of that's sort of a thing that appeals to like not the crypto snobs, right? Like the the guy that helped us with the white paper. He didn't. Yeah. He didn't like that so much, but he also was the crypto snob crowd. Uh, this is a, a aspect that appeals more to like Mooncoin, you know, even Shitcoin, which I don't associate us with that at all. But <clears throat> they like a large supply because they want to buy a lot, and it's psychologically, you know. I think people, they feel a lot more, they, they feel that it's a lot more likely for something to go from point zero 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 you know, eight to, to one cent than for something to go from one cent to, you know, a thousand dollars or 10,000. You know what I mean? It just seems like that's not possible. But, uh, a much yeah. I, it's, it's, all, it's just got to get to a penny, man. How hard is that? When in reality it's the same it doesn't you know it doesn't matter really either way but psychologically it does something i i, I guess my, my, my question really is is you know why not just start with 50 percent less supply like it's a, it, it, it's, a, it's a it's honestly a, you know a bit of a marketing gimmick yeah yeah no dancing around cool. it's marketing pure and simple it, no you know, it, it's, it's not meant to be deceptive it's just it, it's uh, something to say something you know just yeah, because you, you, a project you, that has a very specific purpose, you, you know, that, that's technical in nature. That's not one. You, you see, my, my mind probably works a little bit different to most people. In that, you know, if I see a big fifty percent burn on on the, the token generation event, I'm like, well, wh- why are they doing this for? Like, are they doing this to inflate their own bags, or you know, what's you know, what's it trying to what's it trying to hide? Um, we do not. We don't benefit from the from the burn at all. It's not like we're taking right. ours and then burning it, and then it, we're. The burn happens in that right X. The burn happens before anybody gets anything. Is it before or after? If this if it applies to us, like it applies to everybody, is the point. Was it was X there? X, are you there, buddy? Sure. Oh, yeah, really, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So I apologize. So, so yes. Uh, uh, the burn happens first before it it even touches the network, right? And then right. it's made available. Um, and even us as uh, members of the team, like we're we're gonna be buying after it's it's live too. So we're, you know, also devs, also part of the team, but you know, we're part of the community as well, right? So uh, burning uh, that half supply, you know, benefits the community, which is everyone as a whole, so. Well, to his point, uh, why not just start with the supply of half, right? Uh, that's a good question. And, and when we first started talking, when we were working our way through this with Art, he uh, he basically said, "Why?" he said the same thing. Why are you doing this? And it's like, well, because we've seen other projects do it and people liked it. And it was sort of, you know, whatever. Um, and he says, well, it looks to me like either... Uh, he, I can't remember what one one it had two things that to him it appeared like and it was something like what what you said like either they're trying to do something weird or um or they yeah, so, they so, so yeah let, let me just explain that to you because I've seen it two times like so you can you get a fifty percent burn yeah it looks great it gives you it gives a bit of hype and stuff like that and people like you say you're appealing to another type of investor there look at this they burnt half the supply wow. You know, right. and then on the other side to it, I've seen coins and tokens 
they they'll do the burn after they've got their own wallets. So let's say, look, let's just keep the math simple. So let's say you've got uh, a million tokens, right? And the team has a hundred thousand tokens. They're going to burn. They're going to get their tokens. They're going to burn half the supply. So there's only five hundred thousand. So their actual percentage of holdings increases. Um, but you know, technically, when you're looking at it, it, it's not. It's still going to show the same. It's not going to sh- take that into effect. So I, I was just wondering right. what you where where you guys are at with that. That you've done your burn before any holders were there. So that's fine. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's done before any before any holder. Yeah, just and just to be transparent. I mean, you know, to me, um, there's no substitute for for the truth, whatever it is. And we, I think we, sometimes we're even over, tra- we're overly transparent possibly <laughs> sometimes. Um, but I do, I, that's one of the things I like about it is, you know, if you, if somebody asks us something about like that, it's just, it is what it is. You know, we talked about it. He actually kind of like pushed back a little, you know, like this kind of, to me, it looks like these other projects made a mistake or maybe they over allocated to themselves. And then they just, you know, people push back and said, Oh, that's crazy. You know, your, your team allocation is ridiculous. And so, they burned, you know, a huge portion of that, um, or they decided their supply was too big, but it was it was uh, too late, so they burned half of it because people were complaining of the size of the supply or whatever. But um, <clears throat> at the end of the day, that particular thing is uh, it, it's a it's, we were also kind of going back and forth on what we wanted the supply to be. So we started out with one number, and then we talked about making it different. Like he was wanting it to be a little smaller, we were wanting it to be bigger, and then he kind of came around and he was like, you know what? screw it just go go on go on with it like that and he, it, it kind of grew on him too from a marketing perspective but if anybody asks me i'm going to tell them that that's you know that's kind of there, there's no real function there other than something to talk about and uh, it's not going to make any there's no benefit to us it, no that's cool you know, yeah, yeah. there's no funny business good it's question though good question because that's probably a question anybody experienced would ask uh, guys, you want to talk about your NFTs as well? I know time's getting on and on and on, and we're probably not going to have much time for questions after. But like... <laughs> let's give let's give John let's give John a few moments to talk about that. Um, John, if you want to jump in, uh, John John yeah. likes to talk, so um, and he's done a great job with this, and he deserves to be able to talk about it. So we want to make sure. He yeah, no, I'll, I'll keep it short and sweet. So, uh, hey guys, I'm Jr. John, whichever one you want to call me, I go by both. Um, so. Uh, I manage our brand and our marketing for uh, for Coyote with uh, with others on the team. Uh, I come from a background of extensive design, brand development, um, and brand strategy, all the way through illustration and and digital marketing. You know, the the list kind of goes on. Uh, just in my my professional background, and I wanted to you know find a way to to, to bring that into this. You know, crypto can sometimes feel dry and and only meme dri- you know meme driven and and uh you know and and gimmicky at times and i thought you know how do we you know how do we put good visuals out there how do we do something that also sends a message and you know with the popularity of of nfts showing their face over the last you know year year and a half you know obviously being a coin like it'd be kind of cool to jump into the space and and bring them to uh to fruition uh you know, during our launch. And I thought, well, if we're going to do it, let's, let's keep a theme going, you know, let's, let's have, let's have a theme of not just another knockoff of Bored Ape or, you know, CryptoPunks or any of those guys, like let's actually send a message. And so every NFT that we have come up with, and then I've personally illustrated and worked with Matt, which I'll let him uh, speak on about our, our proprietary uh, algorithm uh, generator in, in a minute. Uh, we said, Hey, let's, let's actually make these, a statement of people and so every nft that we've done uh is is some visual of a coyote or or a series of coyotes eating a whale and uh i just feel like the pack you know of, of coyotes is stronger than the one whale and we thought it was a really creative way to you know push our, our message to the community and uh and kind of promote that inclusiveness and so you know even going back to what chris said about the utility you know, it doesn't just benefit us, um, you know, and what we're going to build. It's not just the easier way to buy Coyote. Uh, I think that's a truth that's spoken about our brand that, you know, since day one, we, we took that extra time and the extra customer service and the extra behind the scenes development to create an ecosystem for uh, everybody from experienced people and, you know, traders in crypto all the way to, you know, people who've never even touched it. And we want to really promote in- inclusivity and that really goes into our marketing as well. 
uh, we're working on a, a really cool affiliate program that will be built in house and will reward people just for you know downloading graphics that you know the team creates or media that we create and uh, uh, actually leveraging a proprietary uh, or excuse me a unique not proprietary but a unique crypt, uh, 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 what's it called oh my gosh. Uh, I'm drawing a blank here. I'm sorry. Uh, QR code. Sorry. I keep saying I want to say crypto. So a, a unique QR code that they can go in and really promote our brand and our community and get actual tangible rewards. We have the ability to produce physical goods uh, in-house, which is is very unique to you know, the crypto space. We don't outsource things. We, uh, we produce everything in-house, everything from uh, apparel and swag, uh, you know, laser engraved personalized products all the way through, you know, printed canvas and all kinds of cool stuff uh, with our with our NFTs. So we're looking to kind of breach and break some boundaries there uh, as we we push our art and our messaging through the community and let, yeah, you know, let, you know, let them reap the benefit of it. So nice. Yeah. So Matt, do you want to touch on the real quick, you know, what we did when we put our heads together on the uh, on the generator real quick? Yeah, and apologies for uh, any noises. My kids are home. Um, so <laughs> what we did is we came up with a way to do uh, the SVGs in a layered format uh, that John worked on. And then I built uh, from scratch code that would go through and randomly generate colors that are used and applied to each of those layers. And I think when I did the math, there was like 60 million uh, possibilities for the color combinations. And out of that, we handpicked 1,000 to mint well a thousand and one um and so we're we're in the process of putting those up on open sea um and uh, the two um the two rarest we have a number zero which is the, our only grayscale nft we will do across any of our nft collections because we're going to do multiple collections uh and then the number one is actually the original one that john did um so everything else has been randomly generated by the code that I've done. And you can even, I'll post a link in, in the chat where you guys can go and actually see them being generated real time, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, but I'm always around, happy to answer any questions anybody has. Uh, I, I, I want to be respectful of the raise time as well. You can see some of the NFTs on the, some of the people in the, in the DC here as their, um, their avatar, their icon, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I've seen a couple actually yeah. floating about. Um, listen, one more question, guys, um, from me. So marketing then, what are your plans post-launch? What have you got lined up? Yeah, so we, um, so we, we kind of believe in or organic marketing, as you can tell. Uh, a lot of other successful coins out there have spent, you know, a fraction of their marketing budget on paid ads. You know, I, I just, I don't like the idea of forcing our brand out there. I think our organic growth alone has shown uh, uh, a lot of people and a lot of other, you know, social social networks and beyond, you know, how quickly a pack can form and uh, sort of run united, right? So uh, a lot of our marketing, again, promoting that in inclusivity uh, is to, to kind of create an affiliate program uh, where they can acquire a, a QR code and uh, we, we can either laser engrave it as a keychain or as, you know, on a Tumblr cup, whatever they want, and also get a digital version. We ship it to them, uh, should they prefer that. And we would sell that on our, our swag shop as well. Uh, and ultimately when people scan that, it's gonna take them to what we're gonna sort of tentatively brand the hype den. And that hype den post launch is really just gonna be a big marketing dashboard. Um, it's it's very, in the, in the affiliate program space, it's common that a link will take you to a very, very specific landing page uh, when you're trying to target a certain conversion. Whereas uh, we're going to kind of break some chains there as well and target people back to the same exact dashboard that the person who has the generated QR code uh, is using because it's going to have a, uh, a real-time chart, you know, real-time chart data. It'll have our swap on there. Uh, it'll have all, you know, links to all of our social pages. And ultimately, you know, we, we spent a lot of time building digital content and uh, everything from the graphics and the, you know, uh, memes and things like that. And we want to put those in an area where they're updated real time and people can go in there and download them and share them. Uh, we just want them to be in a position to be rewarded for that uh, to help our community grow. Uh, I like the idea of organic growth and a lot of people will say that it'll only carry you so far, but uh, I think we're gonna prove a lot of people wrong. I think that also one of the one of the guys 
and on our team. I, um, I don't know if he would want me to say his name in here or not, but <clears throat> one of the guys on the team had um, talked with one of the founders of uh, Shenzhou, and you know they they made like I don't know a billion and a half market cap, I think. So very successful as far as cryptocurrencies go. And um, and I had talked to him a little bit too. Super nice guy. So very laid back, very forthcoming, um, and friendly. And um, one of the things I think he said to our buddy, he didn't say this to me, he said it to him, but was that, you know, what contributed to their success was, you know, I, I, may, I may be butchering it, but it was something like um, 90% community, 5% what they did, and then 5% something else like paid marketing. I think that's what it was. It was 5% what they did, 5%, you know, know paid, paid marketing, marketing, but 90% um, came from the, what the community did and how, how it grew naturally. And uh, somebody else said, well, he might have been being modest a little bit. But but I think the point holds true that while a paid marketing can be useful, um, a lot, I think a lot of it does come from the community and doing stuff like what John's talking about. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of um, tokens tend to squander their marketing funds and spend it on um, useless things anyway. So it probably does boil down to the community. And, you know, there is probably a little bit of marketing involved. But it, I, it's like... There's got to be a healthy like, balance. Like yeah, but right. like the, John's, creating, John's creating tools and graphics and marketing dashboard. Basically, it's kind of like get arming. It's like arming your uh, arming your people with something that then they can go forth with and yep. um, and do with the mouth. Word of mouth is the best form, right? Well, it's it's cyclical, which is what's kind of cool about it. Like I said, you know, traditional affiliate marketing is going to take the end user to a dashboard, you know, or excuse me, to a, a landing page. Uh, I thought it'd be kind of a cool concept to actually bring them back to the same dashboard that they are marketing from, because it will speak to both audiences. It'll speak to those who are already, you know, a part of our pack and, and believe in our, our journey and our mission, but also, you know, newcomers will see our chart. They're going to see our swap right there. They're going to see, you know, all of our social links and they make the choice at that point, whether they want to be, on the other side of that coin, no pun intended, but they, you know, if they want to be in a position to purchase a QR code, and we're going to make it affordable. I mean, you know, even if it's just a digital download that they can put on their social media, so be it. But uh, uh, otherwise, you know, we're looking at like a $10, you know, custom laser engraved keychain or, or tag or something that we can physically ship them. Cause I just don't think a lot of people uh, think along those lines. Everything's digital these days. And uh, we've had a lot of internal discussions about it. And one of the cool things in my opinion is to Chris's point earlier, a lot of people with the money are not super tech savvy. They're, they're likely older. And what a great way if you're physically talking to somebody uh, and, and you're not and they're not on social media and they're not following us. It's a great way to, to flash that. They scan it with their camera and all of a sudden it opens up a whole new world to them. And uh, I think there's a lot of power behind that. Yeah, it sounds it sounds good. Like I really I, I really like some of your uniqueness here. And, you know, it's, I haven't seen anything like this for a little while. And one of the other things I wanted to touch on is uh, the way your integrity comes across in, in your white paper and your values. It's, it's nice to see. So yeah, good work with that. Appreciate it. I mean, I, I, I'll quit you. if I have a quick second, I'll touch on, on like inspiration behind the brand. I've, I've actually been personally asked a lot about that. Uh, I'll keep it quick. You know, coyotes are, they're scavengers, you know, they're very creative scavengers and they really find their strength, you know, within a pack. Um, and really that the, 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 the brand, the way that the coyotes position on our, our identity is really at the, the, the crossroads of a fierce coyote in front of a glowing sunset. Um, and, and the purple really mimics night, you know, crypto is, is ever evolving and it's, and it's 24 seven thing that we commit to as a team. This is not a, a nine to five. This isn't a side hustle. This is, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of effort. And, uh, you know, from sun up to sundown, we wanted to, to almost show like the sun rising over the over the midnight, right? And that, you know, it's, it's a global thing. So um, uh, our, our brand really represents leadership, humbleness, vigilance, and vigor. Uh, we have the coyote's head sort of turned back, you know, looking over the den, looking over the pack, and keeping a watchful eye, um, and, and just staying vigilant. But we also have a certain sense of humbleness, which you just touched on, that I think, you know, no matter where this goes or, or how big this community gets, we really just never forget where we came from, right? You know, we, we know our roots and, uh, and and the reason why we're doing this is, is to build purpose, not another meme coin, not a get rich quick, you know, pyramid scheme. It's it's for a long-term growth strategy and we have really great leadership to drive that. That's nice. That's nice finishing statement, I think. 
Um, Mark, did you have anything you wanted to mention before? Uh, no. I, I, sorry, I, not, not you, I Mark. Another that. Mark. Oh, another Mark. <laughs> I, Mark. I, love yeah. that, I love that statement John just made, though. Yeah, it was good. Oh, Powerful. No, good not, way to not finish. Not everyone has heard all of the... Uh, you know, meaning behind the, the artwork and, and, you know, all the meaning that's been put into the branding of it. So uh, yeah, it's, well, it's nice. Yeah. When the attention to details there as well, and, you know, every little thing's been thought about It's it's nice to hear it. Um, listen, we're, we're not going to have any time for community questions, but what I'm going to suggest to everyone here today is um, you can go to the announcement post and you can join the Coy uh, Coyote Telegram. And if you've got any questions following on from this AMA, uh, jump in there and ask the guys your questions. If that's all right with you guys. Um, Mark, yeah, did you did you want to? Oh, so le legit crypto, Mark. Did you <laughs> um, did you want to follow with anything? No, no, no. I think everything's uh, being covered now. I I just want to say from what I've um, witnessed, from what you've been communicating, you guys, um, you've obviously shown that you've got a super strong team together. Um, I love the way that you've come in individually with each talent and brought that together to bring um, like a unique concept. Uh, looking at the white paper and stuff, it's super strong, super thorough. You've got some unique aspects in there, um, which uh, are, we really appreciate when new projects come into the space and, and do something a bit different. Um, it's a shame that you can't talk about your main utility um, because for anybody that's you know, wants to commit that 20k. Um, it's it's difficult when they can't when they don't know what's what they're investing into properly because without that, uh, you, you you lose that the the thing that sets it apart. But ho hopefully, it won't be too long till you can make those announcements. I just wanted us to be a little closer to finish. Um, basically giving us a head start but it is it is a two-edged sword right like to to say is it carries a risk and cannot say also can mm, i don't know make people feel a certain way because so many people talk about having a utility and then they really don't have one or it's not good and you know so i don't know i'm, I'm conflicted i want to i want to spill the beans about it and <laughs> go into technical details but at the same time or as, as technical as i can be with it uh, but at the same time, have worries about doing it. That it almost feels like it would be bad for everybody involved if you know if we did it and then somebody else rushed and tried to beat us to it. Uh, well, I, I yeah. guess, I, I, as I say, I guess at this stage, you know, people are taking a leap of faith into you. So you know, they're invested into you and the team at this point in time. Not so much the token. So if you bring that utility in later, you know, it's it's a uh, it's a bit of extra icing on the cake. And hopefully you've you've formed some solid holders from from the people you've you've made already. I'm hoping that the broad, that the outline of what you know the sort of a broad the broad stroke outline of what it is to be um, that we're going to do that we're doing will be something that is at least enough to um, wet the beak, you know, uh, give somebody establish some faith in that there is something there and it's going to be good. Good stuff. Well, listen, but we, we normally like to close on one statement before we um, before we finish up the AMA. Um, uh, and that's a question that we ask everyone who comes in. That is, and it's quite an open-ended question, but at, at which point does this project become a success to you? Oh, boy. I think there's different, different thoughts in here. <laughs> yeah. Not everybody has the same, the same idea of what makes a success. Let's, want to let's, I have one in my mind, but I don't want to, I'll let you guys go ahead if you want. Uh, to me, it's the community that, that drives and makes a, a coin successful. Um, and honestly, that's just like, like you've seen it in, in different projects, right? Uh, a community makes or breaks a coin. It could be the best. It could be the it could be the worst coin, or it could be the best coin in the market. But a community in it, in its entirety is what will uh, give you an idea of the success of a coin. Anyone else? I second it. <clears throat> Batman agrees. Community is best. 
<laughs> yeah, I think this could easily be taken in a financial direction, but um, you know that's that's not the that's not the primary motive. Um, obviously, we would we would hope that the um, community holders could make some money, and that's not a financial statement, but we we hope that they could. Um, but we've had a, we've had a lot of fun building this thing from the ground up getting to know people intimately in Telegram and with some of our other socials. Um, we've developed a real community. And it's been a lot of fun. I feel like it's part of the family now. I agree with yeah. that. I'll jump in and say over over my professional experience, I've built a lot of a lot of brands for clients, some local, some national, some global. And the one thing I tell them, uh, and the same applies to us, is you know, you can have an awesome brand, you can have an awesome, you know, mission, but if if nobody knows about it and nobody can find you and nobody hears about it and sees the value. Uh, it's just, it's just, a, it's just a pretty face, right? And uh, you know, really listening to our community and uh, uh, interpreting, you know, their their goals, their wishes, their ideas, their creativity, and you know, leveraging our own internal leadership to, you know, to bring it forward and and reward them by listening to them. Uh, the 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 financial aspect becomes the easy part, in my opinion. Um, I know Chris's answer to this question, and I'm going to agree with Chris's answer to this question because we say it all the time. <laughs> what is it? Let's tell me so I know you're on the same page. <laughs> Your market cap. Okay, then you know. Yeah, and I, I wonder <laughs> if I should even say things like that because it, it, the truth of the matter is this. I don't – for me, it's kind of like – that's sort of just like a – it's like a high score, right? If you got any video game players in here, it's like achieving a high score. It's not about, you know, I know a lot of people, they joke or maybe they're serious. They're talking about Lambos and all this other stuff, and that's great. It's fun. I know people, you know, a lot of people that are involved with cryptocurrency, that's what their goal is, is to make money. To me, a market cap is sort of a metric for success. It's not about, oh, what's, you know, what's going to come from that. It's more about what, how good, how how well can we build it? How how successful can it be? How big can the community be? The real goal, to me, is something useful that has a real purpose uh, and longevity. Something that's going to end up be, eventually being on, um, you know, listed on major exchanges. But um, I don't want it's just pointless to build something and then you know it's a flash and it's gone. I'm looking for something that people will, everybody will know what it is. It's going to be, you know, like it's got, and, and what comes with that is going to be, you know, assuming it goes in that, in, in that way, it's going to, it's going to, it, that and a, and a large market cap go hand in hand. And I've heard people say, oh, you know, what do you think the market cap's going to end up being? And I think that they're coming at it from maybe a more financial aspect, you know, of like <clears throat> what, what they're going to get. Um, I've heard questions like that. And it's like, well, you know, is it, you think it's going to make a million, five, 10, 15, 20, something like that. And I have to say that if we, you know, I would say the first milestone for me personally, uh, like, like as a metric of success would be if we don't cross a billion, then I'm going to basically, you know, to me, it's like, it, oh man, that sucks. Did not, um, that didn't pan out the way we wanted it to. Not because of, not because of the money side, but because of the, like, I just, that it's kind of like that's a metric for success to me. Getting into yeah. the billion dollar market cap and above, like that is where when if we cross if and when we cross a billion dollar market cap, I'll be like, now we should celebrate. This is now we're getting it right. We're we're on our way. It's we're you know everything's falling together. Um, you know I would hope for more than that, really. You know, but I would say for me for me it's it's not a it's not a goal. It's a minimum. And I don't know. I that might not. Maybe not everybody thinks that way, but um, that's I don't know. the answer I want to hear. I've always liked <laughs> your answer, Chris, because it kind of reflects like, okay, how many, what is all the time and work and effort put in? It kind of gives you like a, it almost gives you that monetary of like, wow, that's how many eyes have been on this project, you know? It's a score to me. It's not. It's like a high score, you know, it's like a compare, it's like comparing to other projects and, you know, it's like, if it's going to have longevity, it's going to be big. So basically, you, you know, the way I look at it is if we don't end up at a, at a billion plus market cap, then we didn't, we didn't really succeed because we didn't hit on things the way that we needed to. 
in order to make something long lasting and that we can look back on and it's, it's known. I want it to be known, you know? So I don't know, maybe that's uh, too optimistic for some people, but it doesn't come from a place of, of like a greedy feeling. It, not, I don't, it, a, you know, it ambitious it drive. Right? I think it doesn't come across as greedy. It comes, comes across as ambition. I'm competitive, man. I, I, I see other projects hit things like that. And it's like, dude, if they can do it, why can't we, I know we can, we've got, an, uh, we've got a great team talent wise. Um, you know, I just feel like it's, it's go big or go home. I don't want to, you know, I don't want a $10 million market cap, you know, like I don't mean to put any projects down. Uh, if they have that, it, it, I don't mean it like that at all. It's just like my own personal standard for what I feel like we should do, can do. And, uh, what counts is like, okay, we're succeeding. Uh, even if we didn't hit it, it's, I've, it's been great. I've enjoyed it. We made friends, uh, friends that I wouldn't have if we hadn't have done this project. But, um, but for me, it, you know, it, it ties into that, the longevity piece, the market cap, they go hand in hand. And if we, if we succeed on the, the main goal, which is the longevity piece, uh, by, by creating something that's actually, you know, useful or industry changing, then um, the market cap's going to come with it. It's just part of the deal. Interesting stuff. Well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing this uh, utility and hopefully you reaching your, your targets. So, Thanks, man. It's, uh, <laughs> it's been a pleasure to have you guys in. Um, thanks very much for spending some time with us. Um, hopefully a few of us from Legit Crypto have gone on the journey with you. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Seriously, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, man. Thanks, Toaster. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate thanks very much. Stay tuned for ducks.